Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. Welcome to my show. I couldn't be more pleased to have Jake Pavelka in studio. Uh, many of you remember him from his uh, seasons on The Bachelor. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's been a decade. Can you believe it? I couldn't believe it. I went back to, to look at some old footage, and it was uh, January of 2010 that you, yeah. were, you were The Bachelor. And uh, In fact, uh, without further ado, let's roll just a little bit of video of, of you as The Bachelor, <laughs> because I think it's, it's, it's really cool. I mean, we're gonna talk about your real estate career here in a second, but uh, gosh, when you look at that young man, what do, you, what do you think? I remember shooting those scenes downtown. That's right where JFK uh, yeah. shot. Yeah, and that. there was a lot of topless in this one. <laughs> <laughs> I was, it, we might have to have a, uh, a PG rating right. on this on, on this on this show. Uh, but uh, tell us how how did you get selected as a bachelor? My church nominated me. No I was kidding. going to Covenant Church, and, and uh, the, they the church nominated me. I never thought anything would come of it, but that's originally in 2008 how it all came to be. Did you watch the show? No. Never did. No, I I mean I'd seen it. I was familiar with you know I, when I started going through the casting process. Obviously, I started watching it, but uh, and it was uh, Jason Mesnick's season. Uh, and then out of that, I can't remember who The Bachelorette was after that. Yeah. Somebody. But then, I mean, it was a whirlwind because not only uh, did you do The Bachelor, you did Dancing with the Stars. Yes. What was that like? Hard. Was it? Dancing with the Stars was really hard. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it, Kate, you know, it's, it was just a, a, a journey, you know, in, in the moment I was saying, golly, this is the funnest thing I've ever done, but this is the hardest thing I've ever done because I'm not a natural dancer. And I was having to practice 10, 12 hours a day. And so wow. doing that, it's really hard to not sustain an injury. Well, so I have to tell the story about how Jake and I met. I was having lunch with some friends, and they said, hey, do you want to meet The Bachelor? And uh, Victoria, like, and, I, <laughs> <laughs> Victoria and I are big fans of the show. And, of course, we watched your, your season and Dancing with the Stars. And so you and I became friends. And at the time, I was, we were looking to expand our offices. And mm -hmm. I said, hey, w would you become our tenant rep? And you, you said yes. But I want to brag on this man because I was, I was the client from hell. Because no, I was the guy. No, I was, no, no, not at all. I was, the, I was the guy who didn't like any office space that you showed us. And, and uh, I'm trying to think now. It, it could have been a year, maybe more, of you showing us different office space. Well, sometimes that's just, you know, what it, what it takes to get, you know, get a space right for a client. That's, you know, ESRP, well, you know, the commercial real estate firm where I, where, I'm, uh, where I practice real estate. That's just what we do. We work with the client. We refine, and then we work, and then we refine again. And, what comes out of it is a, a great office space. In your case, a great studio. Well, thank you. And I, I think um, what I want to say to the viewer is, uh, you know, there were many times along that journey when you could have twisted my arm and said, hey, this is a beautiful space, Jeff. Why don't you consider this? But mm -hmm. you just kind of let me do what I was going to do. And um, during that year, uh, the space became available here at Lincoln Center. And yeah. we couldn't be more thrilled with the space. So, good. So it makes thank me feel good. You. Well, thank you for being so <laughs> gentle along the, uh, the process. Uh, so tell me what it is like, uh, you know, a person is engaging you for the first time as a tenant rep. What, is that, what does that mean first for the people who aren't familiar with the expression tenant rep? Uh, OK, that's a really good question. Um, one of the things that uh, you know, our company ESRP, uh, how we differentiate ourselves uh, around the globe is we only represent businesses and people who buy, buy or sell real estate, meaning you, you rent space at Lincoln Center, mm -hmm. uh, so you rent from, you have a landlord. Yes. We don't represent any landlords. 
Got it. And a lot of companies, a lot of really big companies, they represent both sides of the house. So for instance, this landlord is engaged with Cushman Wakefield. Mm -hmm. Well, Cushman Wakefield also has a tenant rep advisory uh, service. So it's, where is the fiduciary? Is it like, are we right. working for the landlord or are we working for the, you know, for the, for the, the tenant? Yes. And so that line gets really blurred. The law firms, do, this is the first thing they do is a conflict of interest check. I can't believe there haven't been any really big lawsuits about conflicts of interest. I could see that. Because yeah, real right? estate, yeah, is typically a company's behind labor or employment. It's the second largest expense. And so there's a lot of liability there representing both sides. And so it's kind of surprising. So that's where we differentiate. We only represent tenants or people that, you know, are looking to rent or buy real estate. Wow. Well, no I, landlords. Um, <laughs> you, you've always impressed me as just a straight up guy, almost like a Boy Scout. Uh, we, we, tell me about your parents. How were you raised? Uh, well, I kind of had a story, but you know, my mom's a nurse, my dad's a doctor, uh, finally retired at 74 years old, and I had a really good, uh, you know, model in parents. Uh, my dad, he kind of made, made people sick, you know, they go to the grocery store together on Sundays and he still grabs her butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, you know, I've watched my dad yeah. court my mom, mm. you know, for 40 years now, and it's, you know, it's really been interesting you know, watching how he's cultivated that relationship with her and how he's pursued her, you know, beyond their marriage. And, wow. and uh, so that's kind of what, you know, I've always brought to a relationship is that, that same model uh, where the pursuit doesn't just stop once you get married. It, you know, it, it goes, but of course, I haven't found the girl that I want to marry yet. Well, that's probably what everybody's thinking right now. Is Why the, are you is not the, is the, <laughs> yeah? Have you just not found the right person? I mean, cer certainly you've had many opportunities to date. Um, I have. Yeah. Um, probably the the easiest way to answer that is uh, after coming off the bachelor, uh, it makes dating very hard. Um, you kind of get whether you want to or not stereotyped because you're on a show on a really a global platform now where you're dating 25 women at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's really not, you know, that first night you have chemistry with five. Right. You know exactly who your final five are going to be. Wow. And then they make the show around the rest of the cast. Got it. Did, wait, um, after being a reality star, um, are you turned off by reality TV or is it still something that you see as uh, attractive? Um, well, it depends on the platform. Uh, there's some really cool reality shows. I, th I think The Bachelor's a great show. Uh, everybody, the most common question is, is it real? Do you really fall in love on The Bachelor? You do. I mean, it's very real. Uh, the way they do that is they take life away. You know, the only thing you have to worry about is finding and falling in love. They find the 25 for you, and then you just find the one that you want to fall in love with, or the more than one, unfortunately. They, that's where they get the, the, the twists and turns from. But... You know, you don't have a boss, you don't have the newspaper, you don't have Bernie Sanders, you don't have Donald Trump. Right. Uh, you know, none of the distractions, um, you know, that get in the way of a, a really good, great relationship. So basically what they do is, it's, and it's genius that Mike Fleiss, uh, the creator of The Bachelor, found a model to do this, is the timing for everybody is perfect. And if you know anything about a relationship, it could be the right person at the wrong time. Mm. Well, you told me one time, and I may have uh, uh, gotten this wrong, there was an 18-month period where you were on more covers than Kim Kardashian. Yeah, in Is 2010, yeah. I beat her in magazine covers. That's amazing. That is, it's kind of nuts. <laughs> the Bachelor was just, uh, you know, social media, Facebook. It was Facebook, and before that was MySpace. Um, I remember from my season, Ali Fedotowski, she worked for Facebook, and she was telling me that Facebook was extremely concerned about Twitter. I'm like, Twitter? What the hell is a Twitter? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but it hadn't been invented yet. I mean, they were just programming that. That, that was the first, uh, I guess, social media app that I had on my phone. Was it weird to go into a CVS or something like that and then see yourself um, in the magazine aisle? Um, yes. Uh, I never got used to that. Um, so I was in Flower Mound. There's mm -hmm. a Walmart at, uh, in Flower Mound that I was, I was doing some grocery shopping. I usually kind of go late because I, I could get in and get out pretty easy. Um, I was standing in line. I was on the cover of one of the magazines, probably 
Us Weekly or something like that, and the person in front of me picked it up and said, golly, I think this guy's probably the biggest jerk in the world. I'm standing <laughs> right, I mean, they use some more colorful language than that, but, you know, I'm standing behind going, you don't even know me. <laughs> Did, didn't you like, want to have that, that moment when you say, excuse me? <laughs> well, you know, it, I didn't say anything. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't, didn't know the person, and, you know, it's... Yeah. That, that was probably the most surprising thing about going on reality TV is that you open yourself up to criticism. You invite criticism into your life. Yeah. And people are happy to give it. <laughs> and, 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 I mean, I think they, you know, they're catching you at your, your weakest point. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're tired and you've been shooting all day. So, I mean, uh, I, I, I admire you for going through everything that you went through. Yeah. Well, it was uh, shooting the show. So back in, we shot the show in, from September of 2009, uh, we, we were done two days before Thanksgiving. And then you, know, you had a little bit of time, time off. And then wh when, it, when the journey really started was when we started doing press and the season started airing and America started living this, this journey that we had a couple months prior right. in the present. And then you had total silence. I mean, you couldn't say anything to anybody, could you? No. My parents didn't really know who I picked at the wow. end I chose. That says a lot for the, <laughs> the vow of silence that you took. Well, uh, let's do this. Let's, let's put up your website because if people uh, have uh, mm -hmm. office needs, I want them to be able to get a hold of you and uh, put your website up there. Right? Yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, that's awesome. And uh, they can contact you through the website. And again, Jake Pavelka, thank you for being a guest yeah, on the show. Yeah, this is awesome. I appreciate this it. This was wonderful. All right, that's it for now. We'll see you next time.